uh, hopes for him. So uh, welcome to the stage. Uh, Larry, thank you for joining. Thank you, Alan. It's uh, great to be here and to join everybody. Let me do the share thing. Okay. Yeah. You set up, maybe just hit the hide button at the bottom. Yeah, I think you got it. So I'll leave you to it, Larry. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. So everybody, uh, it's great to be here and I look forward to your questions. I'm uh, going to put my contact info in the uh, in the chat here, so you'll have that. Okay, so let's get to it. So what I'm talking about today, <clears throat> excuse me, in just a short amount of time, are API explorers, and in particular, the uh, API explorer uses blocks. And I'll uh, give you a live demo and see uh, if this uh, makes sense for you to implement for your API. So first, uh, to get things rolling, what's an API Explorer? That's a tool for making live calls to the API endpoints. Sometimes um, companies call this an API playground. So you can see an example on the right-hand side from a company called Daily Motion. And notice how you can select with dropdowns, and you hit tests, and then you get your answer. And uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as we say. So the benefits are that you are enabling the developer to get from zero to hero by quickly trying out the API without writing a program or scripting. And I think uh, an important feature is uh, the typed requests. So that means uh, in the case of, uh, of um, enumerated types you, or Booleans in this case, you get to choose uh, from the preselected values. You don't have to remember it, check boxes and so forth. Now, if an API gets more complicated, then what happens is there's many companies where their API explorers use a text area for creating the request. Now, this has got benefits and uh, issues. Benefits is that, for instance, you can just copy this entire text area and then put it into your program if you're using JSON directly. Also, the, uh, this format supports nested objects pretty well. So you can see that amount is an attribute at the root level, and then that amount gets set to an object, uh, a JSON object, which in this case has two attributes set. In the same way, payment method is an attribute that gets set to an attribute with a number, uh, that gets set to an object with a number of attributes. So this is all good, but what are the issues? Number one is more thinking is required. It's uh, easier to make an error. The explorer is no longer click and, uh, and off you go. Now, I had one person I was talking with, they said, well, you know, you can do linting, you can do various checking. Essentially, you can compile the JSON and check whether it's okay or not, and then give error correction. Yeah, you can do that. I think there's uh, better things uh, as uh, better options as well. Now, sometimes APIs have quite a lot of nested objects. So this is, in fact, an example of the DocuSign API. So we have a lot of objects and a lot of arrays, and you can see that they're nested here. So look down here, you can see six levels of nesting, and this is not a particularly complicated format. So if you're using that text format, the problem is that you don't have guardrails. You're programming, you're not really exploring. So what's the goal? The goal is an API explorer that supports click and go, easy request creation, and supports deeply nested API attributes of arrays and objects. And we've uh, got other, we've got some other uh, goals as well, and you'll see uh, you'll see how we did on them. So let's do a live uh, demonstration here, and uh, I'm logging in. So okay, so now I've logged in. So on the left is the uh, toolbox. You can see the many different uh, sets of blocks. We'll do that a little bit later. Here is the actual, what I call diagram, and you can move things around and you get even a nice clicking sound. I don't know if that's coming through. This is the result area. This is the status area. And this is, uh, and this is all ready to go. So if we just say send envelope, uh, we, because we want to avoid what's called the uh, greenfield effect where, where you don't know what you can do. So this way it's already set up and ready to give you a working example. So uh, this particular example does uh, what we call embedded signing. We sign, we finish, 
and then we're going back to the API Explorer, and what you're seeing in the status window is uh, the API level results, including at the very end, the uh, last result, which is that we got back the event parameter uh, with uh, the value signing complete. So that all sounds pretty good. So let's now uh, dive a little bit deeper. We want to have lots of different examples, and uh, we've got descriptions of these examples, and we want to be able to, of course, add more examples. So then when we load the example, we can also get instructions that tells us what to do to make the example go. And uh, so then you can see this is a longer example. Now, uh, this also, uh, you can see, uh, for instance, this is a uh, enumerated type, and so it uh, knows exactly what values are available. We have um, a documentation. Uh, if you hover over any of these uh, uh, any of these blocks, you get the documentation, and also you can include uh, comments. So this is a comment here, and I can add to it if I want, and then uh, I can close this. So this is an example. I've now I've downloaded it, and I can modify it as I need to, and then uh, uh, again try it out. So uh, now the way this works out is uh, <clears throat> you can see these different uh, objects here. Now, in some cases, it's possible to arrange a block in a way that doesn't make sense. So for instance, this here block is a object which goes uh, inside the signer block. But if I move it up above like this, you can then see that we get an error message that says that the sign here block cannot be processed in its current position. So the good news is we also have uh, control Z for undo. And if we undo everything, we go back to the way it was where, where it's working. So that's good. Um, and uh, we can do lots of things. For instance, we can duplicate a block. And that's got uh, various menu items here. And so we need to then, in this case, say that we want document number two. Uh, so there's two of these documents. Uh, if we had the same document ID, that would be a problem. So now when we uh, send this off, if it works correctly, we should get a signing, uh, embedded signing ceremony with uh, two documents. So here's the first document, and I need to uh, agree with either license one or license two. And then here it is again. This time I'll agree with license two. If I if I agree if I try and do both, uh, the purpose of this uh, oh that was on the second uh, document. So in that case it was okay. But if I had done it on if I clicked both on that first document, then I would have gotten an error. Okay, so uh, that's all good. Let's see uh, some of the other things here. So we can open a diagram. And when we open a diagram, an important, this is opening uh, something you upload, that's pretty obvious. But something more important, much more important, is to build a community uh, exactly as we just heard. And so part of building a community is we want to help uh, enable people to help each other. So the idea is that if you uh, create an, uh, an example diagram that you want to share, you can throw it up on a web server somewhere, and then you can tell people, what the URL is, they can enter it here and then open it up directly. Or in fact, they can uh, put it, uh, you can give them a link to the, uh, to the tool and, and that'll work too. So that's an important community building feature. And uh, we can reset it. Examples you already saw, that's the list of examples. This red dot is warning you that you've uh, changed the diagram, so you'll probably want to save it. Uh, documents is what enables you to upload new documents. So uh, anytime, in my case, we're doing uh, electronic signatures, it, the, the tool comes with three documents, but then you can add uh, additional uh, documents. And that uh, will then become part of this uh, diagram. Now, what I'm doing for documentation is I'm saying that uh, I want to use videos. Uh, we only have, I only have one video here now. I'm working on producing more. And the idea is that uh, people often tend not to read documentation, as we all know. So the idea is that instead there'll be videos for them to uh, 
check out short videos for, um, for learning about different parts of the tool. OK, now, an important feature are the multiple languages. So the tool uh, has built into it that it translates the JSON into one of, uh, I think it's seven different languages. And what it does is it produces the um, diagram here uh, and, and creates all these different objects. So um, for instance, this anchor string right here, all this is live. So this anchor string right here is sig1. And if I change it, you can see it's changing right here as well. Or if I change from pixels to inches, you can see that that changed here as well. And so uh, all this, uh, whatever you change the diagram is immediately changed here. Or if you notice, it was also changed into JSON. So uh, what this does, uh, it builds up from uh, the leaves outward uh, up to the top. And then finally, it creates the entire uh, envelope definition. That's the top level for this API. And then it uh, calls the um, it calls the API and uh, and gives you the results. Now the way this works is you first download the framework, which is the couple of extra files plus the uh, document files, and then uh, you then download this example, and then you can put them together and run them. So we've got that for multiple languages. Okay. That's been a very quick demo of that. Let's uh, do some concluding slides, and, and then we'll declare success. So goal number one, if you recall, was uh, to uh, make it easy with blocks, with everything set, uh, to explore an API. So there's multiple parts were needed for this goal. So the first, solution, the first part of the solution, solution step number one, is the decision to use the open source Google Blockly library. And um, I've been using this library now for quite a while, and it's fantastic. Thank you, Google. And um, I've not needed to make any changes to the source of the library. That was my one of my design decisions to limit the scope of uh, what I was trying to do here. And it's worked out fine. Every, everything has worked uh, uh, very well. And uh, then step two is to use the builder pattern to add data to the request object. So the idea is that order counts, and each one of these uh, containing blocks is an object. And an object affects the nearest prior appropriate object. So the document object goes into the create envelope object, which is the topmost one. And then uh, the sign here object goes into the signer object, both because it can and because the signer object is above it. Now, as it turned out, as it turns out, for various reasons uh, within the API, the sign here object, much less frequently, but it does, uh, it is uh, sometimes the case. The sign here object can go into the document object. So, if you were to put this above signer object, then you would have, uh, you would probably get what you don't want. So, order counts. This is the uh, builder pattern from the gang of four. Now, solution three is that each one of these blocks spits out uh, text, which together, if you do it right, adds up to a to code, to a program. So what I do is each one of these blocks is programmed within the Blockly system to uh, spit out a little bit of this program. And this program is uses the um, uh, uh, programming style of what's sometimes called fluent or sometimes called chained. So you can see that this first line right here returns an object. And then that object has a method called add envelope default attribute. And this object itself returns the same object. So that means that same method can be called again, this time with different parameters. It also has a couple other uh, methods. And each one of these methods is uh, returning that same object. So you can then call yet another object. So that uh, is the next step. And then this program here is, is run. And all this is happening on the browser. This program is run. And the output is the JSON, uh, which is our goal. And um, I can tell you, recursion is fun. We all learned about recursion. And I was doing a lot of it in this uh, project. 
Now, how is all this, uh, how does the tool know what to do? And the answer is a Swagger file. And uh, that's also these days better known as OpenAPI. If you haven't heard of it, the Swagger file defines the methods, objects, attributes, types, relationships. In our case, it includes documentation too. Now, the way we produce the Swagger file for the eSignature API is uh, that the platform itself generates the Swagger file. We have a special uh, internal only uh, method that we call a method and out pops the Swagger file. And that way the Swagger file is locked to the uh, actual, what the platform is actually doing. Now for the API uh, SDKs, what we do is we create the SDKs from the Swagger file. And we do that automatically using CodeGen software, which is open source. And then this tool that you saw me demonstrate, it uses recursion to auto-program the SDK from the JSON. So because uh, everything is done mechanically with software, uh, it all works. So what my program does is it looks at the JSON, it then walks the tree, and at the deepest uh, leaf, it then starts generating code. And so you can see here that this uh, deepest object is, the, uh, is a sign here object, and then it creates the array, right? See, there's the array there, and then it works its way up the tree and uh, you then get your program. So that works well for, so far, C-sharp, Java, and you can see this other list here. Visual Basic, we don't have an SDK, and uh, not yet, uh, we could use the C-sharp one, but instead I'm just generating it, uh, a Visual Basic program that uses uh, the, the JSON directly. So that's good. And then let's uh, summarize some features that this includes. So we're also able to include the AP documentation, API documentation. We can show the request as JSON. We can auto-program the request uh, to spit out uh, in different SDK languages. We've got those pre-built examples you saw, and then developers can modify those examples and save them. You can, as part of that, you can save your work for reuse or sharing. And, particularly with sharing is this helps with the community for uh, enabling people to, uh, to share their, their uh, to help others and to share their work. The feedback has been quite positive. I uh, showed this to a number of our customer developers uh, back when we were able to meet face to face and uh, everyone's been very positive. The tool includes an NPS survey and there's a feedback button. So we're hoping to learn a lot more uh, as people try out the tool and they'll let us know what they think of it. The status is that the release is planned for January, this coming January, uh, next month that is. The open source version is available right now and uh, so you can try that out and uh, you'll need to put together a Core's gateway, but that's not very hard. So uh, I'm ready to take questions, but, uh, but uh, in fact, what I want to uh, also just briefly show you the, um, uh, whoops, where'd it go here? Is this gonna do the right thing? No. Uh, okay, well, I'm ready for your questions. I wanna show you the, uh, the deep levels of, um, there we go. Um, just that there's a very large number of objects here. And basically any one of these objects, you can then, you can then pick it and uh, put it uh, onto the diagram. So this is a large set of objects that uh, the tool enables you to put together to create an API request. Wow, Larry, that's fantastic. It's uh, obviously a lot of love has gone into this tool. Uh, how long do you uh, how long did you spend building the tool in total? Do you think? Okay, good question, uh, Alan. So uh, I had this idea a little over two years ago, and I first uh, 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 we have internal hackathons at DocuSign, so I worked with a uh, I was able to uh, bring together a, a group of engineers, and they and myself we uh, put together a proof of concept as part of the hackathon. So that was two years ago. And uh, since then, in my spare time, I uh, have been, uh, I did a, a, a redesign based on what we learned from the proof of concept. 
and then uh, I've been working on it uh, part time. It's um, and so now uh, two years later, we're uh, we're in the final uh, final strokes for uh, bringing it. Uh, public, uh, uh, getting it onto the DocuSign infrastructure so that uh, everyone can try it out. Okay, and, and when it comes into DocuSign, is it then um, you know a paid product of DocuSign, or will it remain open source? Or what's the uh, what's, what's the plan there? Right, good question. So we believe in open source; it'll stay open source. Now, what you're seeing here is uh, the version that uses the DocuSign look and feel library. So uh, that's like uh, the fonts and, um, uh, for instance, the way the modal, uh, this modal pop-up looks and things like that. The mm -hmm. open, so what I did is I put in a extra layer of uh, React so that uh, the same source tree can be used to build it with the, um, uh, by using the user interface library of um, Bootstrap. There's a Bootstrap React user interface library. So this way, I'm able to make the open source version from the source tree and uh, enable people to try it out without um, distributing the closed source, which is the um, the DocuSign internal React user interface library. So the bo the bottom line is that the open source will st will continue to be available, and it looks virtually the same as this. This will be uh, initially a tool that's available through the DocuSign Developer Center. And then uh, our product team is then planning to formally productize it. And maybe uh, various aspects will, will get updated or changed. For instance, mm -hmm. one issue right now is that all of this work has brought a API request builder that um, only handles two API methods. Now, the, the, the main one that it handles is building an envelope, and that is by far our most popular API method call. That's why I'm doing this. And you can see all the different objects that go into or can go into creating an envelope. But we've, mm -hmm. got, another, we've got another 300 API methods, and presumably the product version will uh, cover either all of those, the most important ones, or something like that. So there's certainly more work to be done. Uh, as we get to the formal product version, but this will be available from the developer center. All right, looks good. You know, I mean, I'm building an API portal as a service, so um, that part of that might well find its way into this. So uh, don't be surprised if you see uh, <laughs> some of that in it. Great. That would be um, great. Let, let me know. So the open source version includes software that um, analyzes the Swagger file and produces various intermediate outputs which this program is then using. This program is running entirely inside the browser. And uh, so you only want to send down uh, basically pre-digested chunks of the Swagger file. Cool, very, very nice. Uh, and one last question I can see in the background you've got an ABBA. Is it, does it say ABBA uh, card? What, behind me? Yeah, uh, that's, from, uh, that's from my daughter, uh, ABBA, which means father. Okay, okay, okay. So we're going to say this, uh, you know, being in Finland, very close to Sweden, I think you'd have had some kudos here. But hey, Larry, thanks a lot. Very, very nice uh, talk from you, and I wish you all the best with that. Thank you, Alan.